guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. I am Cute Dolphin 954 and today I'm back with another Roblox GFX related video. Before I begin, I want to say thank you so much because today I hit 800 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. Today I live streamed for about two hours. Um, it was Bed Wars and a ton of people joined. It was so much fun. I will be doing more in the future if you guys like them. Anyways, back to the video. Today I will be counting down the top 10 biggest no-nos when it comes to GFX. It'll be talking about scenes, and it'll also be talking about fashion GFX. So, I hope you enjoy, and if it does help you out, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell down below, that way you can always be notified whenever I create a video. Anyways, let's begin! Right now, I just realized I forgot to mention something really important, which is, this is not really listed in any specific order. Like, even though it is, it doesn't really matter what order it is. The point is, all these are really important not to have in your GFX, and yeah, I just wanted to make that clear real quick. Now, first up is your poses. When you're posing, you want to make sure you have the best poses possible because a bad pose can really reflect on how your GFX looks. For example, on this GFX, of course, there's like many things wrong with it. I made this months ago for my friend when I was really new to GFX. However, as you can tell, the posing on that was like terrible. The legs were out of place, the arm was weird, the torso was very straight, it's very stiff looking, the arm is out of place as well. Everything just looks extremely wrong and you can just tell that I'm very beginner and new, but when you have better posing, your GFX will really improve. For example, with a better pose, your GFX could look something like this. Now, of course, there are many other things in the GFX that make it look better, but you get the point, the pose makes it look 10 times better because it makes it look cleaner and it's not gross looking. Number nine is low quality effects slash overlays. What I mean by this is, for example, if you're looking on the screen right now, you can see there's a very trashy looking brush effect that you could add to your GFX. But why add that? Cause there's a gray drop shadow outline around it that makes it look very low quality and low resolution. And why would you want to add that when you could have so much better? In just a few simple steps and it wouldn't take that long to add it. You know, this isn't the only type of overlay that's low quality, but I have no other ones right now and I couldn't really find other ones. I'm sure you can find out more on Google, but you get the point of what I mean. And I suggest never adding those or else it'll make your GFX look kind of not trashy. It'll just make it look bad. Now, number eight is not adding textures onto your GFX. That's a big no-no because, for example, look at this GFX. There's no, no texture at all. It's just white, smooth. There's nothing on the chair. There's no texture on that. No texture on the bed. Not even a wood texture. Everything is plain. And there's a lot of problems in this GFX. I made it ages ago. It sucks, I know. But the point is, it looks very bad because there's no textures on it. And you could definitely improve it by adding textures, which is extremely easy, and I made multiple videos on how to do that. So you could definitely go look at them, and it definitely help you improve. Number seven is not denoising your GFX. Some people may not know what noise is, <laughs> noise is and the noise is those little dots that you might see in GFX. People don't really know how to get rid of it, which is super easy to do, and I can make a tutorial on that for Blender, but basically, when you're rendering on cycle, your cycles, you're definitely going to get a ton of noise in your GFX, it's totally normal, that's why you denoise. Then, sometimes if you denoise too much, it's going to get all splotchy and messed up, so you have to really be careful on how you do it correctly, but I can totally make a video on how to do that in the future. We are at number six, which is almost halfway done with the video, but number six is bad lighting. Bad lighting really affects how your GFX looks. It can make a big difference, and it's really important to always have the best types of lighting, or else it'll make it look a little bad. Now, this was not made by me. Credits is right now on the screen of who made it, and they are on Twitter. However, the best thing you could really do to focus on trying to learn lighting is, for now, try to work with HDRIs, and then after that, start doing your own lights and it'll become much more easier it's kind of hard to explain but just start working on lights and trust me you'll get way better number five backgrounds that don't match i don't even know if i have to explain myself on this one but i will for the video's sake this was like my second or third gfx i've ever made and 
course, at the time, I thought, yeah, this totally matches. And with the cow, I'm a, I'm a farmer, of course. But it looks, it doesn't match at all. It's a totally random background. There's no shadows. It looks terrible, right? But of course, right, the theme matches. Okay, I get what you mean. You were probably thinking, I thought it couldn't get any worse. But it can, it can get worse. This render is totally way bigger than the entire mall for some reason. And the background just doesn't match at all. Which is why you should always just use ones that were made for the render program like you shouldn't just edit in backgrounds you should definitely just find one on roblox studio or something or try to make your own but definitely don't do something like that it'll make it really bad looking and just don't ever do that for real trust me don't ever do that now number four is overlays and effects and even text that does not match the gfx and this is a perfect example. I made this ages ago. I made it back in August. Made it for somebody's birthday. And geez, I don't know what I was thinking, man. The cake, the random cake overlays, and I get it's somebody's birthday, but what the heck. And the random spark, the random like confetti, and then the text sucks as well. I don't know what I was planning exactly with that GFX, but I hope I never do it again. Like, if you're gonna add random effects to your GFX, you should really think about how it looks before you actually give it to somebody. Cause do you really want somebody to think that's yours? I mean, it sucks. Like I wouldn't ever want somebody to know that's mine, even though I, like, I just exposed myself to like 800 people, that's fine. The point is that, you know, it sucks. We are already at number three, but before we begin number three, make sure you have already left a like on the video and make sure you are subscribed. And yeah, let's continue. So now on number three, it is sizing things weirdly. What I mean by this is look at the character. Look how tiny it is on such a big icon. Now, of course I made this like, it was like one of my first GFX commissions, but it sucks already because you can see how tiny the render is and the legs are really bent weird for some reason. And same with the arm, it's really odd. But you can see that it looks bad because of all those reasons, so you always want to make sure you never do that. Now if you make the render take up more space on the screen, just like this one, and add more effects of course, it makes it look 10 times better because it's the main focus of the GFX. Next up, which is number 2, one more left, is not using rigs or bones, and this is like a terrible thing because it makes your graphics look really weird like look this look at this this is like my first gfx well not gfx but i made it on roblox studio and i called it a gfx and you can clearly tell it was a screenshot of a roblox studio thing it looks really weird because you can see each limb bent and you can see little things that are bent weird on it and it's hard to explain but you can tell by yourself that there's stuff wrong with it i'm gonna show another example right here here you can see it's obviously a roblox studio type of gfx it's a screenshot and that it's, you can tell by the pose that it's super weird the pose is all bent and it's stiff and it's weird but if you're using a rig or bones you'll be, you'll be able to bend it better now we are finally at number one and number one is having your own sense of style it's called being original having your own types of gfx that people could easily identify knowing it's yours do you want to be like this person called random guy 4329 and copy my gfx or would you rather have your own sense of style because this person decides to use the same brushes as me to use the same font same pose same effects same overlays everything the exact same do you want to be like that or should you have your own style and make people want to copy you instead of being the copier think about it Anyways, that'll wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If this helped you, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Remember, today we hit 800 subs. Next up is 900. And then we are about to hit 1,000 subs, which I would have never imagined in my whole life. Hitting 100 subs is absolutely insane. I mean, 1,000. And when I hit it, I'll be going crazy. Anyways, that'll wrap up today. See you in the next one. Peace out.